والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We begin by praising and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we bear witness that there's no one worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as was requested of me to speak about the etiquettes of Salatul Jumu'ah, to talk about the things that we should do and the things that we should avoid when it comes to the Friday prayer. And it begins by talking about who is it who is Friday prayer obligated on? Who is, who is uh, under the, the umbrella of Fard to be attending Salatul Jumu'ah? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first reminds us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, idha nudiya lis salati mi yawmi al-jumu'ati fasa'u ila dhikrillahi wa dharu al-bayr. Thalikum khayrul lakum in kuntum ta'lamun. O you who believe, O you who believe in Allah, O you who have testified to the prophethood of, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ فَسَعُوا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَذَرُوا الْبَيْرِ When the call for Salatul Jumu'ah, when the call for Friday prayer has been made, then rush to the remembrance of Allah. And not just rushing to the remembrance of Allah, but Allah adds in, leave behind your trade, leave behind your work, Leave behind your school, leave behind your family, and come to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ It is better for you if you were a people who understood. It is better for you to leave behind everything and come to the remembrance of Allah for Salatul Jumu'ah. Salatul Jumu'ah, first of all, move forward. Move all the way forward. There's space all the way to the side, so please move up. Salatul Jumu'ah is obligatory upon every male above the age of puberty. Every male above the age of puberty. And puberty does not begin after college. Puberty begins at the age of 12 to 13 years old. And if you look around the masjid, how many 12 and 13 year old kids are taken out of school to come and attend Salat al Jumu'ah? Right, that is a problem with the way that we practice our deen. Salat al Jumu'ah is obligatory on them the same way fasting is obligatory on them. The same way five daily prayers is obligatory on them from the age of puberty. Their accountability has begun. And so before we talk about the technicalities of what you should and shouldn't do for Salat al Jumu'ah, who should be in the masjid for Salat al-Jumu'ah? Every male from the age of puberty up. So as parents, as Muslim parents in the West, in the West, what, what message are you sending to your kids? Allowing them to miss Salat al-Jumu'ah because they have school. What, what are they learning from that? What message is being passed on to the next generation that it's okay for you to miss Jumu'ah because Allah will understand that there's school? When in the Quran, Allah said, no, not even work, right? At least at work, you make some money. At school, you get nothing. And what you're missing in Salatul Jumu'ah will never outweigh, or what you're missing outside is never going to outweigh what, what you're missing in the, in the masjid for Salatul Jumu'ah. Especially when you hear the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he tells you the punishment for missing Salatul Jumu'ah. Right, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, the one who misses three Jumu'ahs for taking this matter lightly, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will seal his heart. The one who misses three Salatul Jumu'ahs, three Friday prayers, for taking this matter lightly, Allah will seal his heart. 
And when we talk about the heart, when we talk about the qalb, the qalb is the home of iman. The qalb, the heart of a person, is the house of the faith that they have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah says He will seal it, somebody should be taking it. We should be taking it seriously. This is the place of your iman, and Allah says we will cover it when you take our matters lightly, when you take our commands lightly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who do not take the commands and the words of Allah lightly. Now when it comes to the technicalities, again, brother, there's so much space in the front. So keep moving. When we talk about the technicalities of Jum'ah, what should we do? Right? We begin by talking of the ghusl. Making a ghusl, making a full body wash when you're coming to Salat al-Jum'ah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, it is compulsory, it is obligatory upon every Muslim to have a ghusl on Friday. It is obligatory upon every Muslim to have a ghusl on Friday. And Friday, we know, our Friday, Jum'ah begins from Maghrib on Thursday to Maghrib on Friday. That's the way the days work for Islam. From Maghrib to Maghrib. So from after Maghrib Thursday to Maghrib, you should be having a ghusl. And of course, it's in preparation for Salat al-Jum'ah. So having a ghusl, having a full body, and this is not just getting in the shower and washing your hair and, and washing your body and Ghusl is a ritual bath. It's where you're making the, the wudu as well as washing the private areas, preparing to be purified. Right? It's the same ghusl that you make when a husband and a wife have relations. It's the same ghusl that you're supposed to make for the sisters after their menstrual, after their menstrual cycle to be able to pray salah again. Every Friday we should be making a ghusl. Every Friday when coming to the masjid. Secondly, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised you that, the, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this day a day of Eid for you. So whoever can have a ghusl, have a ghusl. And when you can, if you have the, 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 the cologne, something good to spray, put something on you to smell good. And use the siwak. Use the siwak. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to use the siwak, the stick that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to clean his teeth with. You don't have the siwak, you have a toothbrush. Right? Hygiene. Hygiene, being clean, smelling good when you're coming to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also used to wear his best clothes when coming to the masjid. Apparently, be, pre, you know, be presentable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't be a burden on people around you. Of the sunnahs of Salat al Jumu'ah is to read Surah al Kaf. Reading Surah al Kaf, and we've given a khutbah on Surah al Kaf before. Right? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, the one who recites Surah Al-Kaf on Friday would have a light that emanates from him from this Jumu'ah to the next. From this Jumu'ah to the next. And we explain that it, that is not reciting the Qur'an like a parrot. Right? That the benefit of the Qur'an is understanding what Allah said. The light that emanates from you is understanding the benefits of what Allah mentioned to you in Surah Al-Kaf. Now you've dressed yourself, you've presented yourself, you're coming to the masjid, you're the etiquette, the etiquette of Jum'ah as well as the etiquette of Islam is to be on time. It's to be on time. I don't know at what point in history that our culture has just overtook everything. <coughs> Being on time is something that the Prophet ﷺ was very adamant about. When the Prophet ﷺ would tell you he would be somewhere, he would be there before he told you he'd be there. The Prophet ﷺ was very keen on time and if you look at the structure of Islam, Everything is time-based. Salat al-Fajr has a time. Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. Ramadan has a time. Right? Zakah has a time limit. Hajj, given to you once in your lifetime, time limit. Everything is time-based. But for some reason, the Muslim forgot about how to take care of their time management. Right? The Prophet sallallahu even adds that the Prophet, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adds an extra reward for the one who comes to Jum'ah on time. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, when on Jum'ah, when somebody has made their ghusl and dressed themselves and used the siwak and cologned themselves, the one who comes to the masjid in the first hour after sunrise, it's as if Allah gives him a reward as if he has sacrificed a camel for the sake of Allah. And the one who comes in the second hour, it's as if he has sacrificed a cow. And the one who comes in the third hour, as if he has sacrificed a goat or a ram. The one who comes in the fourth hour, as if he has sacrificed a hen. And the one who comes in the fifth hour, as if he has donated an egg, given an egg, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And then when the Imam begins to speak, when the Imam begins the khutbah, the malaika, the angels who are posted outside of the masjid, writing down the names of the people, they close their books and they come and they sit down and they listen to the khutbah attentively. Right? So being on time not just serves a purpose, but it also adds a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of the day of Friday, we cannot forget that the day of Friday is the day of dua. It's the day of giving salam to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that there is an hour on the day of Jumu'ah that if a Muslim were to make dua to Allah, his dua or her dua would be accepted. Similarly, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, the one who sends salam on me, the one who sends salawat on me, the malaika presented to me on Jumu'ah. The names of the people who said Allahumma salli ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is presented to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam every dua. So be among those people who are remembering Allah by dua and remembering the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by sending salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum wa nisari lil muslimin fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al ghafur rahim. Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Those things we're supposed to do Clean yourself, have some hygiene, right? Eat, having a good smell, having a good look Coming to the masjid on time, reciting Surah Al-Kahf of, of the biggest things that we have to avoid Is missing out on the purpose of being at Jumu'ah the reason you come from your job, the reason your kids are supposed to be pulled out of school to come to Salat al-Jumu'ah is to earn the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, coming to fulfill the command of Allah. And if you were to do all of that work, prepare yourself and clean yourself and you come to the masjid and you don't take any reward, right? What a waste of time. What a waste of time that would be, right? And the biggest issue when losing or how to lose the reward of Allah when it comes to Jumu'ah is engaging in love, idle talk, idle conversation, idle activity. And idle talk, love, the Prophet ﷺ even defined it. When he وسلم, he said, even if somebody else is talking during the khutbah, even telling your companion to be quiet and listen is engaging in idle talk. So you hear somebody talking, turning to them and saying, be quiet, would risk your reward when it comes to Salat al Jumu'ah, right? Anything. Coming into the door. Coming into the door, somebody says salam. You do not respond to the salam of the people while the Imam is speaking for Salat al Jumu'ah. Somebody puts their hand out to shake your hand for salam. You do not shake the hand. You do not acknowledge them. You focus on the khutbah. By acknowledging and shaking the hand and saying salam, the Jumu'ah is gone. You have wasted your time. You have engaged in level. You have risked the reward of your Jumu'ah. I don't want to say you're no Jumu'ah. I'm just between you and Allah, but what the Prophet has, in, has defined as level, you have engaged in it. Looking at your phone, texting, answering, calling, whatever it is, playing with your finger on the carpet and drawing, all of it is risking your reward when it comes to Salat al Jumu'ah. When Allah says, the reason you're coming and rushing to the remembrance of Allah, what is the remembrance of Allah that Allah is talking about? Is the khutbah. Is the khutbah. The purpose of being in the masjid is to hear the khutbah. But yet, I don't know if it's a mentality, I don't know if it's a cultural thing, I got people calling me every Friday. What time is Salat al Jumu'ah? 140. No. What time is the prayer? There is no Salat al Jumu'ah without the khutbah. You purposely missed the khutbah to come for the salah, you've also wasted your time. You've also wasted your time. Right? So make it a purpose that the reason you come here is not because I just have to show up. I also have to take the reward with me. I have to earn the reward. And earning the reward is paying attention to the khutbah, paying attention to the speech. Right? There's a hadith, uh, there's a narration by Abu Darda, radiallahu anhu, who said that the Prophet وسلم, was on the member and he was delivering a khutbah. And he's sitting, and the Prophet ﷺ recited an ayat in the khutbah. And Abu Darda was thinking about the ayat, and he turns to his companion, Ubay ibn Ka'b, radiallahu anhu. 
And he leans over and he says, Ya Ubay, when was this ayat revealed to the Prophet Wasallam?" And Ubay ignored him. He says he ignored me and I kept asking him until the Prophet Wasallam came down from the mimbar. And then Ubay radiallahu anhu, he turns to Abu Darda and he says, Ya Abu Darda, you have earned nothing from your Jumu'ah except love. You've gained nothing from Jumu'ah. So of course it concerns Abu Darda radiallahu anhu. And the Prophet ﷺ prayed the salah. And after the salah on Friday, Abu Darda goes to the Prophet ﷺ and he tells him what happened. And the Prophet ﷺ, he says, Ubay ibn Ka'ab was right. Ubay ibn Ka'ab was right. When the Imam is speaking, when the Imam is preaching, giving the speech, giving the khutbah, remain silent until he's completed his khutbah. Remain quiet until he has completed. You are risking the purpose of being here. You've come all this way, spent all this time, put all that effort into coming for Jumu'ah, and you left the masjid with nothing. What a waste of time. What a waste of time. So keep that in mind of the etiquette of Jumu'ah to be completely silent, completely quiet, and just an added thing, because every Jumu'ah we're telling people to move forward. The sunnah of the Jumu'ah prayer is that when you come in, line up at the front. Line up at the front. And I say that like, don't come to Jumu'ah and one sits in the back and one sits. Everyone should be up front. The Prophet ﷺ was, this is a narration, the Prophet ﷺ was delivering a khutbah. Somebody comes in and he's walking over people's shoulders to find a spot. And the Prophet ﷺ stops the khutbah and he points and he says, sit down, you have annoyed people. Sit down, you have annoyed people. So to avoid that, just come forward. Just come and sit here. When you walk in, if you're the first one, you get to sit in the first row. And there's a big reward, by the way, for the one who sits in the first row. Right? If the Prophet, the Prophet sometimes said, if you knew the reward of, of praying in the first saf, the people would argue over it, right? the people would, would fight over it. Be conscious of the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us and our children to be from those who are forgiven for our shortcomings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us and our children to be from those who earn the reward of our Jumu'ah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us and our children to be from those who would earn Jannah because of our Jumu'ah.